Okay, then we'll move on to the fun part, which is map projections. So we'll spend the rest of the class with these. Uh, you can, in the computing environment, open a Jupyter notebook called projections. To follow up, maybe I'll show show the intro from here. So indeed, as we defined in our uh, little math quiz at the start of the lesson, uh, CRS stand for stands for coordinate reference systems, uh, which then define how the coordinates relate are related to real locations on Earth. And there are various different coordinate systems, uh, projected coordinate systems, uh, where you can, for example, then uh, measure areas and distances. So, or then geographic coordinate systems, which are then, for example, longitude and latitude coordinates uh, in a 3D space. Uh, but often, of course, what we do with projections or when making maps, we try to represent the Earth on a flat surface. So the basic, basic stuff uh, that geographers should know. There's a little uh, subset of this um, uh, comic. Let's open it in here for a full view. So if we think of Global map, map projections, there's quite a few of them. Uh, Mercator or then the web Mercator is the one that most of the people nowadays see when you browse uh, online maps. But then of course there's plenty of other, other projections that maybe better represent the relationships of the areas across the globe. Uh, and then maybe also some, some more crazy crazy projections uh, for displaying the round round globe on, on a flat surface. And then of course we're here now in Finland, so there are then some local local projections that are optimized to be as precise as possible uh, in a specific, specific local area, uh, which then use specific datums and so on. Uh, yep. So of course you can find find a lot more information about projections and coordinate reference systems in geography uh, handbooks and such. But here we'll hopefully kind of dive a bit uh, deeper when it comes to defining projections, managing projections, reprojecting data. So what? How is it actually defined if the projection is VG, v, uh, VGS84 or if it's ETRSTMFIN35? the Finnish, Finnish uh, projection widely used in Finland and so on. Uh, all right, so as input data we have a shape file which represents uh, the country borders in Europe. You should have it uh, downloaded in the L2 folder. I'll now switch to the Jupyter lab. So you can check under L2, there's this Europe borders dot shape file and associated files. So we'll work with that, uh, do some reprojections and see how, how the coordinate reference systems uh, are, <coughs> are represented in Python. Uh, we'll start by working with GeoPandas. So as we have a new notebook, let's import it again, import GeoPandas as GPD, and then read the file uh, we have a file path. You can use the OS path join or just type in L2 data dash Europe borders dot shape file. Yeah, as, as. Mm. Okay, uh, so then data equals gpd.read file file path. Uh, 
So somebody was already eager in the break asking, so where is the coordinate reference system information? So here it is, data.crs uh, gives us a dictionary. You see these curly brackets and it ha doesn't have so much information. It tells us that EPSG equals to 4326 and by looking at it, I already know that it's VGS84. Uh, but if you are unsure about, if you see some random EPSG code, you can always go, let's see if this opens correctly, <coughs> not there, uh, spatialreference.org uh, and search for whatever EPSG code or projection name, so what was it, 4326, search. EPSC 4326, so we have the VGS84 projection, so that is the name of the projection. Uh, if we check, we could check uh, a different representation of it. We'll come back to this later, but the kind of string for string format uh, tells that it uses the VGS84 ellipsoid and it also uses the VGS84 uh, datum. Uh, the projection that is also named after this. Mm. And likewise, we can also search for 3067, which would then be uh, the ETRS TM35 fin that we'll, we'll use later. Mm. Okay. So this is one, one way, kind of the default way in which uh, geodata frames uh, print out the coordinate, coordinate information. But we'll learn later that there's also other ways uh, to code, other formats to code the information. Uh, which might be then, kind of contain a bit more information than, than this. Here was the link indeed to the EPSG uh, register where you can check check all the information. Mm. Let's check the geometries. So there's some polygons and also if you look at the coordinate values in there, you can see that there are decimal degrees, so always if you have latitude and longitude coordinates in Python, you should have them as decimal degrees, not as kind of uh, degree, minute, second format. So then you might have to do some calculations if you end up with an input file like that. Uh, we can of course see what other columns we have in here, even though we won't, uh, we won't be using those. Mm, okay, so next. We'll do some reprojecting. Uh, so quite often you get data delivered as v in VGS84, but if you want to calculate distances or areas, uh, it's not really, well, you can do it, but the results are not maybe so valid and meaningful. So we will convert or, or transform this data into a projection that is recommended to use if you have European wide data, so the Lambert Azimuthal equal area projection, so it's an equal area area projection, so the areas are not distorted, but then the angles, angles for example, might be. Uh, before doing that, let's take a copy. So we read in this data in VGS84. So let's take a backup of that so we can compare the results uh, and then the data that we have uh, will reproject so to CRS so here we will replace the original data frame with the reprojected repro version of the same data frame uh, and this uh, geopandas to CRS function assumes that your input data has 
a CRS defined. So that's the starting point. Uh, and then two CRS EPSG uh, 3035 uh, stands for the La Lambert Azimuthal Equal Area Projection. So we'll reproject re the data there and then uh, check what we have. So now you see that there's a bit more numbers in the X and Y uh, coordinate pairs in the polygon definitions that we can see quickly here compared to the ones that we had in here. So these were the latitude and longitude decimal degrees. Uh, here we have uh, the X and Y coordinates in the European coordinate system. I'll just go ahead and also search for that. In here, mm, there might be more information. So, <laughs> from the projection definition, if you can see that uh, in this projection, the units are meters. So we have a metric metric system. So we could calculate distances and get the results as meters, for example, uh, in this projection. There we go. Uh, finally, we could of course visualize these. There's a few lines of code that you need to fill in. So we are uh, importing matplotlib, creating a figure and axis uh, using the uh, pi plot uh, subplots, one row, two columns, figure size. So we'll plot the data VGS backup we created, uh, plot into the first subplot and then we will plot the projected data plot ax equals ax2 so the subplot definitions we learned during week 7 of GeoPython then we can also add uh, titles for those Set title VGS84. So that's for the first subplot, and then for the second subplot, that is then Also put the EPSG code as the title or something, but ETR, ETRS Lambert Asimuthal Equal Area Projection appears to be the official name for that one. Are we missing something? So we're now plotting two subplots with titles. Let's see if that works. <coughs> there we go. I'll just still add something. Uh, learn a bit of plotting before the official plotting lesson so you can also change change the color of one of these plots I'll leave it here for a second as I hear people typing in so then you can visually compare compare how these uh, different projections look like here especially us living in Finland we are always very angry to see a very squeezed or very kind of spread out uh, map of Finland so here it's then the whole whole Europe should be kind of in the equal area projects and the areas at least should be should be uh, kind of in proportion to each other correct so in the same way you could uh, Use some other EPSG code. We have a projected some projection in place. Uh, pre project and then then plot or start doing calculations. And why these look different? It's because the shapely polygon objects have changed in the in the data frame. Uh, in there, you can save it to disk. I had some trouble with disk space, so I won't do it now. But if you want, you can uncomment this. Uh, and save 
save the projected layer uh, into disk. If does it work? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So I recommend a side note. I recommend that you delete from your uh, Jupyter Lab instance. I have now deleted some of the folders. So there's in week one Slack channel. There's uh, instructions on how to move folders that are not empty on the command line. So by default you should have all your important stuff on GitHub and we can at this point remove the files from the first uh, teaching period if you don't need those anymore. Uh, okay, then. So that's, that's basically the basics of reprojecting data. Of course you can imagine that it's not always so easy, so you might have input data that doesn't have a valid CRS definition or then something goes wrong. But uh, the bottom line is if you're doing any overlay analysis, let's say a point in polygon uh, query or some other um, union or, or so on, you need to have the two layers in the same projection. So often you might, for example, have some, let's say, data from the National Land Survey, which is already in a local projection. Then you might get some points or polygons in VGS84, and then you would reproject the VGS data into uh, the Finnish coordinate system. Uh, okay, so then there is a bit of technical details before we go to the well, fun part. So we'll uh, get to know a bit more in detail uh, how well GeoPandas or Python Python packages handle the C various CRS formats. So in here we had this. We have basically information about the CRS uh, code. Where am I here? Uh, represented as a in a dictionary. So there are these projection informations in the dictionary there could be more but there's only this uh, only this one in here maybe we can check did we check uh, what is the C so now if I do data.crs uh, so then again it's a dictionary with EPSG uh, 3035 which corresponds to the European uh, coordinate reference system but uh, there's also other uh, other formats, uh, including uh, proji strings. I'll show that quickly. So these you already saw quickly on the spatial reference system uh, web page. So it's a str text string with different parameters uh, for different attributes. So sometimes there might be a lot of information. Sometimes there's only a little. So you might have information about the datum, the ellipsoid, uh, the projection name, some central point, the metric unit, and so on and so on in these uh, proi strings. And then the dictionary that we saw, it's kind of this information split into a dictionary, basically. Uh, where was I? Then indeed we have the EPSG code, which is, I think it's a good a good uh, way of linking linking these defi definitions uh, to the correct name. Uh, then there's well-known text, which is currently the recommended output or the format for defining uh, coordinate reference system information. And then there's also a JSON representation. So in the future, you might encounter different formats of CRS information and then there are ways in which in Python we can convert between these different uh, definitions uh, based on our, our needs uh, and the requirements. So we are using this, uh, there's this module called PyProy, which GeoPandas uses, and we will here then import uh, class CRS from that, uh, that module. Mm, yeah, indeed here, well, there, here's just a slot for checking the CRS of our data. So just to repeat, this is the dictionary. Mm. And here already somebody came to ask, so if you're working on your own, own computer, you might have to update this PyProy uh, package because it's been updated quite recently and some of these functionalities don't work, but it's been tested with 
with the settings we have now in the CSC notebooks environment. So if you have troubles with your own computer, we can solve those after the class. Uh, so you should be able to uh, import from Py, uh, Proy, Py, Pro, yeah. import CRS. Um, let's see. So this is a class, so an, ob an object which has different uh, methods and parameters. Uh, that we'll, we'll start using. Basically, we'll use the CRS class for switching between these different ways of classifying projections. Uh, there. Mm. Okay, so to get started, we'll uh, use the CRS function and give it some input uh, input value we could do like this so data.crs which would be the dictionary and you would get uh, get some kind of a coordinate reference system object but you see that there's some unknowns undefined unknown so this tells us that that the shape file we have is actually the projection information in there is a bit uh, invalid or at least lacking so for uh, to give you a good example, uh, we will define the projection from scratch using a function, sorry, from EPSG and the EPSG that we are supposed to be using is 3035. Uh, so now if we define it like this, so we get all the information that should be there, the name of the uh, projection and so on and so forth. So let's use that and save that uh, as a variable crs object mm. there we go you can print it again so what this does is it creates an object uh, of class crs from the package pyproy which then contains all the information that uh, kind of coordinate reference system definitions should have. So for example, prime meridian, it's centered in Greenwich and so on and so forth. Uh, so this uh, object then has different attributes. We can, for example, check um, the name. So CRS object dot name. print that so we see the other ones as well so we can fetch fetch these different elements from the object the name then print uh, CRS object coordinate system so it's a Cartesian coordinate system uh, and then the bounds CRS object area of use bounds. So I guess that's the area within which this projection is valid. on uh, we have now this CRS object uh, and as we mentioned there are these different formats or different ways to represent the information for example as text so there's this uh, format well-known text w, uh, WKT uh, that looks like this so the same information that we saw b before now represented according to the WKT uh, format. So it's a bit more difficult to read, but this is, for example, then the default format we should use when writing shapefiles. So this is the most verbose 
it has the most information. So if we compare now this uh, to where was it? This, so we can all agree that there's a bit more information and quite a lot of detail in this uh, well-known text representation of our coordinate, coordinate reference system. Um, and indeed, if writing shape files, this would be then stored in the uh, projection uh, extension file. Now uh, that we have the, this very complicated, uh, well-known text representation, actually I kind of want to check the type, type of this. So that's a, that, that is a piece of string, so text. While this, the CRS object is an op kind of Python object. Uh, so from this well-known text string, mm, we can create, sorry, let's store that into a variable, um, CRS. There. So now we have a string object, CRS uh, well-known text, that we can convert back as a CRS object. So this is again kind of a Python, Python object. And from there, for example, EPSG, we can extract uh, the EPSG code. So this, is, this might seem a bit arbitrary, but then depending on the input data you have, you might have to convert from one uh, projection information to another. Uh, or then print it as a character string and so forth. So you can then again uh, create a new CRS object based on the string and then fetch further information from there. Then there's a side note. Uh, sometimes this two EPSG doesn't work if the information is not reliable enough, but then there is a parameter mean confidence which kind of lowers the confidence interval. So if we would work with the original uh, CRS, so if I put in here instead of the well-known text representation that we created using this CRS package, if I put data.crs, so I don't get an output because it was a bit incomplete, the information, but if I add this mean confidence, uh, so then I get the correct one. Of course, this is, this is a bit risky if I kind of start guessing the EPSG code, but if I know what I'm doing and some, for some reason have to kind of do the pipeline so that uh, it picks the EPSG code from the, from the coordinate refer reference system objects, and then there are tricks, tricks how to get that. But that's just if you end up in a situation that you're not able to get it. Uh, okay. We are almost at the finish line. Mm. What did we still have? So, as I mentioned, it would be good to save the shape file uh, with the well-known te well text uh, representation instead of the dictionary to get the most information available. So, we have uh, the proper definition just from the CRS package, so it was this one, then we convert that to well-known text, like this. So this is now, this generates a character string, and then we rewrite, this is now a different thing than from re-projecting, we are just redefining the coordinates. Uh, we'll do like this. So we have the data.crs, so now this is the uh, data frame, so we can rewrite this information, data.crs equals then this well-known text representation. And after that, data.crs would have all this uh, information that we generated using the PyProid library. And then this, you should be able to save the disk. You can rewrite the same file. Maybe I'll just start, try and do that. So sometimes if, Python is complaining about an invalid 
CRS, you might have to do this trick that you convert the CRS definition to well-known text. Well, it went through. Okay, so, so but this might take a bit of practicing for you to remember these different formats and conversions and things. Uh, just as an overview, if you run this cell uh, and run this cell, so there's now what happens, I take now the VGS layer, uh, so the original layer we read, uh, the CRS from that, then the CRS object, then uh, the EPSG code, then the project string uh, using the two project four, and then the well-known text. So the same coordinate reference system from our input file in different formats. So this is kind of the summary, summary of the different options for uh, defining the CRS in Python. And if you would, if you open, let's say, QGIS, you probably would see these uh, string definitions. Maybe we can, I didn't check this before, but if we open our input shape file properties, mm, where is it? Information. Well, there's not much information in here, but you might then have have some coordinate information in there. Actually, it would be in here. Now, this is a bad tutorial because I don't remember it by heart, but anyway. Uh, so now that you know what is it about, you might start actually seeing these definitions here and there. Uh, and you can always, from the spatialreference.org, check uh, for each EPSG code uh, the other corresponding representations. Uh, so still here, we had this European projection. So there was the text representation. Then there's also this uh, open geospatial consortiums uh, well-known text. So this is exactly what we just did in Python. So uh, that was most of the lesson content. Uh, I have still one task for you and then I'll explain the the exercise, so I would maybe suggest we spend maybe 10 minutes on plotting some maps so you can practice the CR stuff on your own. So uh, under L lesson two data, uh, I did download, so credits to Sake, this was his idea. Uh, there is this uh, NE admin zero country, so data downloaded from na natural earth data. If you want, you can download also some other data, just don't download any huge files. So your task would be to read in the data and then come up with three different global projections and plot the data in three different projections. I'll quickly spoil the fun and show what I did earlier today. So I did this, let's I did a kind of default one, then Web Mercator and Eckert 4, and then this kind of cool orthographic map. So if you want to copy paste, you can check those from the website, but I encourage that you uh, also try to come up with something on your own. I'll just help it get you started and type in the lines of code for reading in the data, and then let's spend, spend a moment plotting some maps. So it's in a folder.
added here some parameters. You can also copy paste from the course web page for making a bigger figure and adding a title. So you need to do a fancy, fancy map, but just to make it more visible. If you have some questions, or hopefully get some at least ideas uh, based on this, I can show you quickly my solutions. So we first read in the data. It has some coordinate reference system in place, which is VGS84. Here I just uh, define the figure size so it becomes a bit bitter, bigger. Uh, the default CRS I just plot with the title and this is the VGS84 world map. And as you can see, for example, Europe gets a bit squeezed in. Uh, second example was the web mercator. So if you search for web mercator in the spatialreference.org, you find this, um, well, maybe even better explanation was from Wikipedia. So there are different EPSG codes for the web mercator depending a bit but this is at least one widely used uh, code for it. So I create a CRS object from this EPSG code, store that into a variable, and then convert the geodata frame to this uh, projection and plot that all in one line. I remove the boxes uh, from the plot and add a title. So you can see that the poles get quite stretched out. And for example, Africa, looks quite tiny in the web Mercator projection. Uh, then I have Eckert IV, which we use quite often when plotting global maps for scientific papers. It's an equal area projection. So Africa's size is at least a bit bigger compared with web Mercator. There I didn't find, uh, I only found this ESRI code, so I had to actually copy the proi string representation from the spatialreference.org and use the from proi4 function to, re to create the CRS, convert, uh, re reproject the layer and plot. And here we have it. Mm. And you could of course always see what happens to the actual coordinate values in these different projections. And then the final fun Fun one was this orthographic projection, so I just copied this long string from some documentation and changed the kind of center coordinates. This is, well, somewhat around Helsinki or, I don't know, in the Baltic Sea maybe, or in Estonia. But then we get this kind of looking at the globe from one side with, with Northern Europe at the center. So I shared on Slack a blog post where this was this, the, the, it was a tutorial for doing this kind of map in QGIS uh, and there you can also define kind of these special projections using these string uh, definitions. So hopefully this got you thinking about projections and projection definitions and you can continue with plotting some nice maps maps if you want and do share your results on Slack if you if you're brave enough. Uh, then we have I'll move back to the web pages so there's some more information in there which we don't have time to go through. There's a tutorial this is material from last year about calculating distances so based on this European borders layer uh, there was a case where they calculated distances to Helsinki. So you can check this in detail. You have the uh, Jupyter notebook uh, in the CSC notebooks. There's some reprojection with the CRS function uh, and so on. But this is a bit, a bit heavy to explain. So those interested can check it in detail. Uh, but as an output, there's basically uh, distances from centroids of European countries uh, to Helsinki in meters. Mm. Then 
uh, there's a little example of how to create geodata frames from scratch. You'll probably need this in the exercise. So basically you just call gpd.geodataframe, which is then an empty geodata frame. You need to add a geometry column uh, and populate that column with uh, shapely objects. So here we are creating, uh, there's a list of coordinate tuples. We create a polygon and then finally using the at uh, indexer for the first row, uh, add the polygon into the column geometry. And this is actually the cord corner coordinates of the Senate square in Helsinki. And then you can of course add another column with some attribute information in there. Uh, this is just a tiny tutorial. So if, if you want to do this, do this uh, tutorial, you can do it. Do it on your own time. S then finally, exercise two. So it's again quite, uh, there's quite a lot to do, but hopefully uh, useful stuff. Mm, and we'll have the exercise session on Thursday. Uh, Let's see if this works. So again, the deadline is next week's Wednesday. So ha you have a bit more than a week to complete this. And if, if you need more time, please let us know in advance, just so then we can organize our uh, work with checking the assignments. Uh, there's three problems. Uh, we work with input data in all of these uh, problems. And again, you can start by removing, oops, let's go back. Yeah, just to repeat that there are these, we use these hidden tests for checking your assignments. So please use the provided variable names. Uh, and then you, there are these code cells that you can only run, but not edit. So those you can then, uh, use for checking that you're proceeding in the correct order. Now let's hope this renders. Yes. Uh, so in problem one, yeah, so here we work with input lists. So you have a list of longitudes and latitudes uh, based on the decimal degree coordinates. You can already tell that they are somewhere around Finland. Uh, so you need to match those lists. So the first coordinate pair is uh, composed of 29.999 something and 63.74. So here you can use, I give a hint, you can use the zip function. Uh, so you need a list of coordinate pairs and then create a polygon out of those. Uh, then based on, based on that, you'll create a geodata frame insert uh, the polygon into the geodata frame and finally plot plot the thing. So kind of going through the basics of GeoPandas uh, data structure in here and then you can detect what, what actually is the shape that we plotted. Problem two, uh, there we have an input data which has uh, columns for latitude, longitude, timestamp, user ID, Based on the latitude and longitude coordinates, you see that we are not in Finland. So we're actually on the su southern hemisphere in Kruger National Park. So this data is from our project, Social Media Data for Conservation Science. So it's a subset of anonymized social media posts. So each row is, you can think of, for example, a tweet uh, from some user. Uh, so there's a random user ID and a timestamp and then the locations. So in a way, these represent the movements of people in the park. So you need to read this data in uh, using pandas because it's, it's not a spatial layer, it's just a text file. Then you create coordinates based on the latitude and longitude. Uh, and then, then we, you'll create kind of, there's not a whiteboard in here, but based on if one user has a set of points, and they are ordered in time. So you will eventually draw a line between all the points through time to see kind of the distance they have traveled and then report, report that distance. So you'll need some grouping functions, uh, iter rows, 
actually now that I mentioned iter rows that that will work but it will be very slow so for this uh, exercise there is a hint uh, which I hoped I would have time to go through but maybe not anymore but do check this hint uh, this almost gives you the answer to that problem so if you have some kind of a data frame and you want to create points based on x and y columns you can do it using iter rows but with this input data it will take 10 minutes to run this code so I, I heard like Sakke said that two years ago when he took this course this is the reason why he dropped out <laughs> so don't drop out if your code doesn't work uh, if you use the iter rows do it press play and go get a coffee and then come back and uh, hopefully it won't crash uh, but then uh, you can also create a function and apply that uh, you can create a lambda function and apply that or then you can use this zip approach so when doing problem to check this uh, hint and come on the Thursday practicals and we'll get you through it and hopefully you learn so these if you would time how long it takes so this the iter rows will be it last year at least it was 10, 10 minutes then there's maybe four seconds and then this is just a fraction of a second people start packing but I'll still explain the final exercise if you need to leave I don't mind um, yeah indeed so the distances individuals have traveled is then in the problem tree so related to the previous hint so that's one we'll uh, create an output file in problem two Kruger posts and then read that in problem three and then uh, calculate the distances so that kind of combines most of the things we have learned so far in GeoPython and all the GIS. Okay, so thanks, thanks for that. Uh, if you still have questions about the map projections, we can check those and then we'll continue next week.